so life is going on, taking these drugs, you think you're still on them, any special challenges in terms of chronically being on it now? Uh, no, I'm pretty much, I've, I've been on it now for three years, a little over, so it's pretty much routine now. It's really um, the only daily reminder I have um, that I'm on, on a medication at all. So um, you said that you've been evaluated and you're MRD negative. Ian, you want to tell us what that means? Sure. So um, MRD, or mineral residual disease, is a way of looking at the very rare cell left, leukemia cells still left in the body. So, you know, looking for the, the needle in the haystack, the, 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 the one in a, in a million cell that might be still be there. I mean, believe it or not, our definitions of complete remission uh, until very recently would allow someone to still have 30% of their bone marrow involved with CLL cells and that could be considered um, in, in complete remission. And clearly, if you can still see the disease, then, then you're not in a complete remission. So now we're looking at ways of, of getting into to levels that we can no longer find when we use very sophisticated uh, techniques. There's a variety of different approaches. The most common is through something called flow cytometry, which is, can either be done on the blood or bone marrow or, or, or both. But um, it, 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 through these techniques, these new drugs and these combinations, we're able to get patients in unprecedented levels of depth of the remission, we mean just um, beyond our ability to, to detect it. And I think it's this, these undetectable um, mineral residual disease that's going to allow us to get patients off of treatment again, right? I mean, so go back to these time-limited therapies instead of having someone on continuously. I mean, it's not surprising to me if you have, if you can still find the, the, the leukemia cells in someone that it's not surprising me if you take someone off one of these medications that, that sooner or later the disease is going to come back. And so, um, so this is where this next generation of clinical trials is going and trying to change how we approach the disease. And it sounds like that's the kind of trial that Nathan yes. is on, right, where exactly. he's either continuing or not continuing. And so I think one of the challenges we have, obviously, is yes, the disease can come back, but as you had mentioned, we can sequence these drugs. We can also then start, and as Nathan said, these drugs have side effects. So Nathan, are, so it's a really important question. Nathan, how do you rationalize the fact that he just told you that he cannot find the CLL in your body and you're still feeling tired and achy and a little bit of GI upset from taking a pill. Does it make you want to stop? Maybe forget it some days? You're going on vacation with your wife. You don't want to take it. Any of those things? No, I, I pretty much have it in my mind that I need to take it. You know, but it is challenging during vacations. It's when I get out of my routine that you know, it, I may miss a dose for that day. Um, knowing that I am MRD negative and the, 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 the chronicness of taking these pills, I, I, you know, I believe that missing a day here, while not ideal, isn't gonna really, I think, overly affect my long-term prognosis. Um, but for, for me, I'm fortunate that my, my symptoms aren't causing me undue you know, hardship during the day. Yeah, I have some aches and pains, but I had them before I had the CLL. Um, so it's just part of life. Okay. So Doreen, uh, anything, any other um, you know, facilities, as, uh, referrals out there that can help people deal with the long-term psychosocial consequences of the therapy? Yeah. Um, I, I think your uh, oncology team is probably best, uh, can refer you to social workers within your treatment center. Uh, CLL Society has different uh, resources, not necessarily psychosocial resources, but there are lots of places you can start by, by accessing those resources. So I think your oncology treatment center is probably the best place to go for that. And there, there is a support element to the CLL Society. We started with one group in Orange County in California, and now we've spread across the country. We have, I think, 38 different uh, groups. So you, you do get a lot of support uh, from being with others that are in your situation and, and bouncing ideas off of them, symptoms, treatments. Um, so I, I think that sense of community is important and that that can sort of help, help you ride the waves that come and go in, in this diagnosis and long-term, uh, the chronic nature of the, the disease. 
a discipline that's growing in many cancer centers are palliative care teams. And Ian, uh, Camille, do you refer your patients to palliative care teams? And I'll start with you, Camille. And how does that go over? Camille, especially patients that you know are in, in a lot of pain or just having a hard time. And the palliative care teams are wonderful. And so it's it's it really helps um, when maybe we've been trying to manage certain side effects and are having a harder time. They they they, they that's what they're there for. Um, so, but especially. Um, I would say patients that have a lot of issues with pain, um, it helps a lot. That's a, not a very common event in for CLL. CLL, right. Um, and, but we use them more commonly in, in other diseases. Or, you know, sometimes when things aren't going right, then it, in CLL it can, it can be a great, great help. But, but, but gratefully, it's not common in CLL. Uh, 